ซาโลซาโลซาโลนามามิบุญดังกุณะสักเรันตัมสัตตาสัดาหนตุสุขียเวรามขายโยจิงกุญชุสักโลดุกันโดนกัจฉันติสัมเบมาเรนังอาหันเชนนโมตัสสะบาเกวโตอะเรหะโตสัมมาสัมบุญเดนเซนโมตัสสะบาเกวโตอะเรหะโตสัมมาสัมบุญเดนเซนโมตัสสะบาเกวโตอะเรหะโตสัมมาสัมบุญเดนเซจัตตารุมิบิงคเวอาโลกาคัตเตมิจันตารุจันดาโลโกสุริยาโลโกอังกาโลโกปัญญาโลโกอิเมกุบิกเวจัตตารุอาโลกาเอตัดังเบิงคเวอิเมสังชตุนัมอาโลกานัมยาดิดังปัญญาโลโกติโอมิสุดเบลสต์วันเดอะเวอร์ดิวันเซสุพรีมลีเอนไลท์หนวันสาดูสาดูสาดูเดี๋ยวเฟรนซินดัมมะ Today we are going to discuss one of the discourses which comes in Anguttara Nikaya in Sutta Pitaka. It means its name is that Aloka Sutta. Aloka means light. In Buddhism there are some signs such as black and white, light and darkness. And there are some signs in Buddhism. Here, it is very important to understand the meaning of light in Buddhism. Here, Buddha explains four lights in the world. Buddha says there are four kind kinds of lights in this world. They are the first one is Chanda Loko. The light of the moon, and Surya Loko, the light of the sun. Agga Loko, agga agi means fire. And Buddha says the third one is the light of fire. And the fourth one is Panya Loko, the light of Wisdom. Always, Buddhism describes light and darkness. Light means wisdom. Darkness means ignorance or delusion. The more we practice wisdom, the more we overcome darkness. Here, little by little, we discuss the Buddhist path, Aloka. Aloka synonyms wisdom for light. Wisdom depends on how far we have overcome darkness. Or ignorance, and uh, aloka in another meaning, same happiness. Happiness depends on how far we have purified our mind. Purifying our mind depends on how far we have overcome 
greed and anger and all some mental states reducing greed and anger depends on how far we have developed practiced wisdom reducing greed and anger depends on how far we have overcome ignorance reducing ignorance depends on how far we have practiced we have developed wisdom this is the buddhist path when we discuss buddhist uh, wisdom in buddhism what is the wisdom that buddhism explains what is the wisdom in buddhism huh? yes uh, we can explain it in several ways hmm? several steps hmm? and especially when we discuss wisdom in buddhism it can be divided into two what they are hmm yes one of them is the understanding of the karmic law the other one is the understanding of the dependent origins karma karma can be divided into four according to buddhism when buddha appeared in the world people in the world had realized only three karmas three actions after buddha attained enlightenment he introduced fourth one then in buddhism we can say there are four actions four karmas what they are buddha says atti bhikkave kammam khanhan khanna vipakam Buddha says, or bhikkhus, there are some actions which are dark, that consequence dark results. Such as if you do something with completely impure mind, then results are dark, negative results, evil results. That is the first one. The second one Buddha says, atti bhikkave kammam sukkhan sukha vipakam or bhikkhus there are some actions karmas which are white that consequence white results third one buddha says atti bhikkave kammam khanna sukkhan khanna sukha vipakam or bhikkhus there are actions karmas which are black and white that consequence black and white results those are the three karmas all of these three karmas can be included into sansaric circle these three karmas when buddha appeared in the world there were some ascetic people who had developed their mind to the maximum level but that level is only in this circle they couldn't overcome this circle because they had realized only three karmas they didn't realize ignorance although they purified their mind to the maximum level actually it is only in the mundane level that depends on ignorance after buddha attained enlightenment when he introduced his message he explained another karma that atti bhikkhave kammam akhanna sukham akhanna sukha vipakam or bhikkhus there are some actions karmas 
which are neither black nor white, that consequence neither black nor white result. That is the fourth one. Actually, that um, uh, helps us to overcome the sansaric circuit. This is the path of the first step of the karmic law. But the special thing in Buddhism explaining the fourth one, it depends on the dependent origination. This is the unique, this is the identity in Buddhism. Some people think that karma and rebirth is the highest teaching in Buddhism. It is not true. Before Buddha appeared in the world, a lot of people in the world, especially in India, they had realized karma and rebirth. In this situation, karma and rebirth is not unique in Buddhism. The unique in Buddhism is that the fourth one, which depends on the dependent origination. All teachers, scientists, intelligence, explain their teachings depending on the conventional truth. What is the nature of their teachings? They explain their teachings according to before we experience something, there was something in our sight. After the experience ceases, the world remains, they say. It is true, but according to only the conventional truth in the karmic law in the first level. But when we go to the second level in the fourth one, which depends on the dependent origination, according to supra mundane level, according to ultimate truth, that is not true. What is that? What Buddha says? Ultimate truth is that what we experience at the moment, we create that experience at the moment. We have no ready-made things in our spiritual world. We create something at the moment. According to our present mental conditions, our sense arises and then according to our senses we experience something. Now I see only this wall. If my eyes, eye consciousness changes, I can see through the wall. Now I can go through, the, through this door when it closes. If I can change my senses, then I can go through the door when it closes. Now we can see a very beautiful hall here. When our eye consciousness changes, we can see many things in this hall. This experience depends on my present mental condition. And this is the reality that Buddha explained. Until we enter the junction of enlightenment, the final goal, our experiences are different. In various ways, we come to a junction. This is the enlightenment. Until we come to this de destination, our experiences are different. But, fortunately, if we can meet our colleagues, friends in this junction, our experiences are same. What is that experience? We can see in the world only three things, three characteristics. Anicca, Dukkha, Anatta. Impermanence, unsatisfactoriness and egolessness. Until we reach this destination, we can see a difference in the world. However, when we discuss Buddha's message, it has an order. 
little by little buddhism explains the world here buddha says in this sutta aloka sutta there are four kinds of lights in the world the sun the moon and the fire these three lights are visible in various places in various times it cannot be applied for everywhere in the same time but fortunately if we can light the wisdom the light of wisdom then we can go everywhere hang in the light of wisdom it means that we can overcome ignorance and we can overcome suffering attachment or detachment and here always buddha encourages us to achieve this goal wisdom the light of wisdom buddha says in the beginning if we need to achieve, achieve this goal in the primary level from the primary level to highest level we should achieve four benefits four things we always discuss those four things but there good association listening to dhamma wise reflection and practice those four things those four things force us to develop wisdom without these four things we can't reach the destination the wisdom when we go on this path as we discussed before we also should have some kind of qualities in our life what they are in the primary level we should have three qualities they are generosity gratitude and virtue we should be grateful we should be generous and uh, the other one is we should have a moral life good discipline especially we should practice at least five precepts if we don't have these things in our life even though we meet some good friends we miss them these three things are very important in the primary level then we can make friends not only we should have friends buddha says but we should make friends sometimes even though we live with friends they are not friendly with us even though they live under the same roof we can't deal with them because of our some misbehaviors that is why we should have those primary qualities that is why in our language in singhala we say that inda inda ek vihara vinda vinda daham manahara sinda vinda duksasara ane devudatno dutu mokkura there is there was a disciple in buddha that reverend devadatta even though he lived with the buddha under the same roof but he couldn't achieve he couldn't reach the buddha because of his misbehaviors that is why in the primary level we should be generous we should be grateful and we should have a moral life we should have discipline in our speech and behavior not only those things 
we should have friends we should associate with them and we should listening to what they say that is also very important these three things are very important having good friends associating with good friends and listening to what they say those three stages are very important not only those three qualities that we should have but when we reach the real message of the buddha throughout our good association we should have one of the three qualities they are very important those qualities are honesty the first one is honesty second one is intelligence third one is gently spoken we should be gently spoken when they say something active listening good attention one day buddha says etu vinyo kuriso asato amaya vinna vanka jato aham dhamma manasa sami i invite the people those who are honest intelligent and gently spoken then i explain them this message and they can get the benefits what are the very sensitive qualities that we have when we reach the dhamma honesty intelligence and gently spoken suvacha these qualities are very important especially we should be intelligent if we are not in- intelligent anybody can cheat us cheat us that is why we should be intelligent when somebody say something we should have a good understanding whether that sermon helps us to overcome suffering the two things that we should find in a sermon one thing is when you are listening to dhamma while you are listening to dhamma you are greed anger and delusion should be decreased at the moment not only while you are listening to but when you practice this path you should have to overcome these unwholesome defilements negative thoughts unwholesome mental states that is the purpose of all buddhist doctrines reducing greed anger and delusion is the main purpose of every buddhist sermon because buddhism always explains the path of liberation our liberation getting rid of suffering freedom deliver deliverance completely depends on how far we have reduced these three unwholesome mental states in this situation we should have good friends we should have good friends and the second one is listening to dhamma and the third one wise consideration or wise reflection that is also very important not only we listening to dhamma but according to what we listening to we should think it again and again in our day to day life not only when we are at the temple but everywhere whatever we do we should think this reality again and again we should be swimming 
in this message. We should be thinking in this message. We should be dreaming in this message. We should be playing in this message. The what Buddha taught. And the fourth one that practice. Practice is described in many ways in Buddhism. In one time Buddha says, you have to practice 37 enlightenment factors, one day Buddha says. Then Buddha says, you have to practice eight things, which is the noble eightfold path. Once Buddha says, you have to practice seven enlightenment factors. Again Buddha says, you should be skillful in six senses, in eye, ear, nose, like that. Again Buddha says, you have to practice five spiritual faculties. Then Buddha says, you have to practice Four Noble Truths. Again Buddha says, you have to practice three disciplines, virtue, concentration and wisdom. In another time Buddha says, you have to practice only two things, concentration and wisdom. Finally Buddha says, you have to practice only one thing, which is wisdom. When you practice wisdom, all other qualities in Buddhism gradually increase. Buddha explained sometimes only wisdom for those who are gifted, who are very intelligent. Buddha explained only one thing, how to develop our wisdom, the way to develop wisdom. According to audience, Buddha's sermons are different. And however, when we get the Buddha's message in short, we have to practice Samatha and Vipassana, concentration and insight meditation. It means living in the present moment with understanding and reflecting on impermanence. On the other side, Buddha says, we have to practice only one thing. That, Buddha says, I proclaim only one thing to practice for the purification of the beings. I explain only one way to overcome sorrow and lamentation. I explain only one thing to overcome grief and pain, pain and grief. I explain only one thing to, one thing for knowing the path. I explain only one thing for realization, attaining enlightenment, which is mindfulness, fourfold mindfulness. Mindfulness is very important, as we explained before, mindfulness also can be divided into two. Mindfulness and mindful meditation. Both of them are very important. A lot of people in the world, in the current society, explain mindfulness. What is their message 
in mindfulness. They usually say that forget your past, forget your future, live in the present moment. Then you can overcome your stress. As treatment of psychiatrics, they advise us to live in the present moment, forget in our past and future. Even though it is a treatment, it is not Buddhism. Buddhism never advises us to forget our past or future. When we develop mindfulness, actually our memory gradually increases. That is a benefit. That is not a mistake. Memory is a skill. Memory is a benefit. Memory is a result of practicing mindfulness. It is not a mistake. What is the mistake? Living in the past experience. We can remember anything in the past, but we do it consciously, mindfully. We know very well, now I am reading my mind. Then, we can remember anything which happened in the past, not fixed, fixing, fixing our mind in the past experience. Now, when we think something which happened in the past, our mind is fixed in the past experience. That is why we have attachment or detach, detachment. Here, in one side, Buddha explain us to practice mindfulness, the awareness of our body and mind, or the awareness, awareness of our body, feelings, consciousness, and mental formations. Not only the awareness of our body and mind, but Buddha explained the importance of reflecting on the reality which is impermanence. Keeping our attention in the present moment with our body and mind, we should reflect on what happens to our body and mind. The nature of our body and mind is impermanent. The turning point in Buddhism, whether we are ready to go on the path of liberation or not, is that understanding impermanence. A lot of people say that impermanence, like a very easy thing, but it is not easy. We can say it very easily, like impermanence, but the meaning is not easy. It has a deep meaning. Impermanence that Buddhism explained depends on the understanding of the dependent origination. It is a deep, deep concept, deep teaching in Buddhism. What is the impermanence that Buddha says? Yes, very simple meaning of impermanence. When the conditions are there, arise in and cease. Hmm. Anicca. Yes, anicca is a synonym. I ask you the meaning. Yes, I think that there is a very special sentence in Buddhism. I always explain it that I think it is a it is the golden statement in Buddhism that, yes, ahutva sambhutam hutva nabhavisati in Pali language. Not being occurred comes to occurrence. Being occurred will not go to occurrence. This is the impermanence that Buddhism says. Whatever we experience at the moment, that experience didn't come to the present from the past. That experience will not go to future from the present. The experience 
which arises with the present conditions it ceases immediately when conditions cease that is the meaning of impermanence understanding is the impermanence is the turning point whether we go on the path of liberation or not if we understand this reality we know very well if we realize this reality we can overcome suffering if we are ignorant in this reality we are suffering even though we have a lot of facilities even though we are well educated and rich if we can realize this reality we are ignorant and we are suffering if you understand this reality we are hurry to realize actualize this truth we are hurry to reach the enlightenment what is the reason we don't like to suffer now we are okay maybe tomorrow we will have a very big problem in our, in our life our close relative may depart next day tomorrow that is why we should be hurry to practice this message buddhist teachings help us to clean our tears in this situation if we can understand this reality then we find the path path is mindfulness whenever we are in the field of the buddha mindfulness we are away from suffering whenever we are away from this field mindfulness we are in the field of the mara we are suffering even though we are laughing even though we have a lot of facilities we are not away from suffering that is why buddhism encourages us to understand this reality and go on this path on the other side buddha says if you understand at least a little this message if you have a close relative or friend if he is ready to listen to what you what you say then your duty is to explain this message to him too if you love him or her but they should be gently spoken this is like counseling we can give counseling by force friend should be ready to listen to what we say and explaining buddhism is like that if audience is ready the teacher will appear <laughs> and uh, here understanding of the dependent origination is very important it means understanding of impermanence depends on the dependent origination dependent origination means the process of the nature of arising and ceasing of suffering when we experience something if we think there is something outside or after experience it remains it means we are in suffering on the other side if we think there is something outside at the even at the moment what we experience or if we think that 
we experience something as it is they are also yeah ignorant you know a lot of scientists in the world they think that they research they divide atom and they may think that they say that anyone can research in the lab and anyone can the same ex- anyone can see the same result it is same in some persons who are in the same ignorant ignorance but according to reality it is different from person to person the experience we receive through our senses is different from person to person according to our present mental conditions the experience that we receive through our senses changes that is why there are some stories in buddhism in buddha's time not only even in the buddha's time that even now also we can see sometimes we have some news in the world when someone goes to a lake he can see the water he can drink water that is another person who goes to the same place same lake he can't see water he is thirsty but he can't find water others are going to the water and they bring and drink water but there are some people who can't see the water in the lake according to their mental conditions the experience changes and this is the reality what buddha explained and uh, even though some persons attain enlightenment they also have the same experience in the mundane level for example there was a man who is bante losaka even he attained enlightenment when he begged food he didn't find any food because of his some karmas which happened in the past day, past lives and even though he had those facilities he was not sad because he is mentally in the reality physically he had some problems but mentally he was okay mentally he is always reflecting on the reality but some people may say that so sad bante losaka is very hungry uh, how we help them sometimes they may ask but bante losaka had such a problem mentally he has so come suffering in the mundane level we need some facilities but when we go to the supra mundane level it is same whether we receive flowers or of stones in the primary level ordinary people are happy when we receive flowers when they receive flowers they like flowers they hate stones <laughs> but when we attain the <laughs> highest goal enlightenment whether we receive stones or flowers they are same because we see only four fundamental elements in power and stone have only four fundamental elements earth element water element fire element and wind element however 
understanding of the dependent origination leads us to understand the four noble truth when we understand the dependent origination which is the unique in buddhism we realize four noble truth what are the four noble truth that dukkha satcha the truth of suffering or unsatisfactoriness what is the truth of suffering buddha says in short arising of five aggregate is suffering what is that when we experience something if our mind is fixed in that experience it means we are in suffering even though now we are in neutral but any time when that experience changes we may suffer if we get anything as permanent in outside it signs that we are ready to suffer if we don't depend on outside any material things or persons it means we are away from suffering when those things change we don't suffer as soon as we experience something if we are clever to realize as it is then when we look at outside suddenly we look at inside what happens to my mind the ordinary people when they experience they look at outside when we experience something we look at inside what happens to my mind what happens to my five aggregate it means nobody or nothing can disturb our peace of mind we have made an unshaken mind if we laugh a lot when we experience something outside it signs that we are ready to cry very soon <laughs> when <laughs> those things change <laughs> hmm. he who laughs a lot when he or she experiences something it signs that hmm, he is ready to suffer when the experience changes and it doesn't mean that we don't respond actually we can respond with understanding with mindfulness that is the path of the teachings of the buddha and when we understand the dependent origination we understand the dukkha satcha the truth of suffering and also the cause of suffering the truth of the cause of the suffering what is the cause of the suffering attachment desire or greed greed is the nearest reason of suffering but it is not the only reason of suffering it is only the closest reason nearest reason what is the what is the root of suffering avijja yeah. yes very good avijja ignorance or delusion is the root of suffering because of root of ignorance we have attachment or detachment buddha says nate kama yani chitrani loke sankhaparago purisasa kama there are no lustful things in outside if there is something which is very beautiful or pretty it is not lustful where is the lust yes lust is within us lust is inside in the outside there are only four fundamental elements there is a very beautiful person i think he or she is very beautiful 
someone may say that he or she is very ugly. She is beautiful for my world. She is ugly for another person's world. Ugly or beauty is doesn't depend on that thing. It depends on he who experiences. And in this a situation we realize what is suffering and what is the cause of suffering. The nearest cause of suffering is attachment and also in another way we can say detachment, hatred also or a cause of suffering. Hatred and desire are the both sides of the same coin. When we throw the same coin, we throw both things, greed and anger. Now you like your sons a lot. When they are successful, you are so happy. When they fail, <laughs> you are so unhappy. What is the reason? Because of the attachment. When your sons fail, your neighbors <laughs> never, they are never <laughs> suffering. Mm -hmm. Suffering or happiness depends on our attachment. When you overcome attachment, then automatically anger also disappears. That is why Buddha says, even though Buddhism points out the nearest reason of suffering is as greed or desire, but Buddhism says the main root of suffering is ignorance. Even though the nearest reason of suffering is greed, Buddhism doesn't say us to overcome greed. We can't overcome greed. For example, if this hall is very dark, we can't remove dark. What should we do? Yes, we should light a candle. Then automatically darkness will disappear. Like that. Even though the nearest reason of suffering is greed, we can't overcome greed. We should do that overcome, overcoming ignorance. When we are going to overcome ignorance, actually, we can't even overcome ignorance. What should we do? We should light the the light of wisdom. Light in the wisdom is the way to overcome suffering. Light in the wisdom is the way to overcome ignorance. When we reflect on impermanence, then greed and anger have no space to live in our mind. Whenever we reflect on impermanence, at the moment, we have no any attachment or detachment. In the primary level, until we reach the final destination, Buddhism has proclaimed some primary techniques, such as practicing generosity, practicing virtue, and practicing loving kindness to overcome greed and anger in the primary level. But it is only the primary techniques. When we go to the deeper level, practicing impermanence, then we don't need to practice any loving kindness or 
contemplating on the impurity of body parts because we don't find anything no any person outside we can find only five aggregates not only we can find but we see only the rising and ceasing of five aggregates in our mind our entire life is the present thought it means five aggregates the nature of the five aggregates is the invisible hand of suffering if we can realize this invisible hand then we don't depend on outside then we are so fortunate other people are going outside finding happiness spending a lot of money wasting their time here we are sitting in a place without ex- uh, spending anything wasting time we can overcome suffering that is the path what would they explain suffering the cause of suffering and the cessation of suffering cessation of suffering is that cessation of desire or greed it means that getting rid of ignorance on the other side it means light in a candle of wisdom and fourth one is the path that leads to overcome suffering the truth of suffering the noble truth of suffering the noble truth of cause of suffering the noble truth of the cessation of suffering the noble truth of the path that leads to getting rid of suffering path is in short three disciplines sila samadhi panya virtue concentration and wisdom in loan the for the eight noble eight fold path the main thing is that understanding the dependent origination that is said buddha says he who sees the dependent origination sees the dhamma he who sees the dhamma sees the dependent origination he who sees the dhamma sees the buddha he who sees the dhamma sees the buddha the way to see the buddha is seeing the dependent origination until we realize the dependent origination actually we don't know even buddha appeared in the world this is the way how to see the buddha when we see this reality buddha is, is alive in our heart it doesn't need, it it doesn't say that we should respect the buddha physically actually mentally we respect the buddha we are grateful and how we pay our gratitude to the buddha understanding this message and practice this message as much as we can that is the way buddha asked us that we should be grateful buddha never accepted any material op- offerings to him but we practice it for our inner peace but buddha doesn't need it the supreme buddha needed only understanding this message and practice this message in our life as much as we can have you any question yes um so we realize this wisdom to get rid of suffering but who's getting the result of this wisdom 
then now we say that in mundane level there is the person who is enlightened after we attain enlightenment we don't see a person i mean my question is it's a little bit complex um can i draw like sure draw? sure um, it is okay it's um mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. You can make it. You can roll it. So, okay. So this is a, let's say, it's a, a Christian person, right? Hmm. When this Christian person dies, hmm. he has a soul. Hmm. Right? So this is dead. Hmm. This is a soul. So then this soul, according to Christianism, you can go to heaven or hell if you're good. Hmm. So they have a soul. Now Buddhists here. Mm. When we die, mm. there's no soul, anatta, right? Mm. So we don't have soul. But we get karmic effects. Mm. If this person was good, if this person realized the truth, and then this person here could be reborn, not heaven or hell like a soul here. could be reborn into a good family or higher realms or hell this is a soul what do we call this buddhism if if there's no soul if there's anatta yes i get me good i i just want to make like visual so it's mm-hmm. clear yes that's good here <coughs> even though buddhism okay in the mundane level they both think in the same way There is a discourse in Buddhism in Majjhima Nikaya, Sabbaso Sutta. Buddha says, there are a lot of people in the world, even among Buddhists. They may think that, I do good activities, I will be reborn in a blissful life. Still, they are thinking, there is a permanent soul. He is not different from that person. but he practiced good deeds as the result of good deeds he will be reborn in a blissful life here also even though they don't even though they believe there is a permanent soul even though they don't believe the karmic law they practice good deeds as their duties they also can be reborn in a blissful life whether we believe whether they believe or not a soul believing a soul or not doesn't decide our life next life our next birth decides our activities our activities decide our next birth even among buddhism actually when they listening to dhamma they understand there is no soul but when they active when they act in their subconsciousness they have a soul what do they call soul this this one down here they call soul the yes the thing yes reincarnation no yeah the yeah, thing is but, but this thing that gets karmic results Yes, here, very important thing, that believing soul or not doesn't decide our birth, next birth. If we do good deeds, whether or not we believe soul, we can receive a good life, according to our good activities. But here, even buddhist in the mundane level they do good activities when they listening to dhamma they understand there is no soul but when they practice good deeds in their sub consciousness they believe there is a soul but there is a very special special place where we attain the first step of spirituality enlightenment sotapanna 
when we all come, when we pass this step, we completely overcome the misunderstanding of certain soul. Until we reach this step, while we are doing good activities among even Buddhists, we believe there is a permanent soul. After we overcome this step, nobody can change changes our understanding of no ego. Actually, Chuti Sita, there is a very special name in Buddhism, the, the latest consciousness. When we, when we die, the, la, the latest uh, mind or mental situation is called as Chuti Chitta. Actually, every moment we can see like a Chuti Chitta. This present thought influences next thought. Our latest consciousness also like that. And uh, however, the thing is, understanding of the karmic law helps us to do good deeds. But it doesn't help us to overcome soul. You know, according to three steps that I explained in the first that there are four karmas. Among first three karmas, we have no chance to understand there is no soul. We understand there is no certain soul is in the fourth level, fourth karma, which depends on understanding of the different origination. Yes? Please explain it. Can you just intellectually understand the fourth? Yes. Or, can you, or is it necessary to through practice and meditation? Actually, it should be realized in several steps. The one step is first, we should listen in it as it is. It says in Buddhism, Sutamaya Jnana, the knowledge of listening. The second one is, Chintame Jnana. It means the knowledge of thinking, wise reflection. The third one is Bahaname Panya. The knowledge is knowledge of meditation. In three levels, we should practice this understanding. First, we should listen to as it is. Then we should think it again and again. Then we should realize it through practicing meditation. Here, it is very important to understand the karmic law. Buddhism accepts a next birth, but Buddhism explains rebirth in the mundane level. In the supra-mundane level, Buddhism doesn't say that there is a next birth. But if this level here, down, this second, yeah, there, no, no, here, yeah, this little thing hmm. there, from someone looking from the outside, that's what's getting karmic energy, good or bad. So then when you die, if you accumulated good karmic energy, you go to heaven or rebirth or if you go to hell, bad energy. Yes. Now that little thing, that's my question, that little thing, from someone on the outside, they don't see any difference between soap up there or mm. here. It's the mm. same thing. Mm. Because it also accumulated karmic energy. So what is accumulating karmic energy? Is it something physical? Is it a form? Or is it something... Physical? Actually, our, our karmic energy represents the physical things. You know, when we do good things, we can see our mind. <coughs> But we can see the form that we receive as the result of our karmic energy. Is that a karma 
Yes, actually that is the consciousness. Consciousness is the reason of uh, birth, but it is not permanent. Even though it influences our next birth, it is not permanent. It's an energy. It is an energy, but it doesn't need a space in any way. It doesn't need a physical thing. We always think that there is a vijnana or karma or consciousness, it should have a place to live in a material thing. It is not like that. But when it's inside our body, then vijnana is inside our body, right? Actually, vijnana or consciousness helps our physical body, but we don't say that a particular place where the vijnana lives. So it's an energy. It's an energy, but it influences our entire life. It has no form. So what's going to determine your next life? It's this energy that you're accumulating. Yes, every moment, consciousness has decided to where we are going. In this moment, even though we are bearing a physical human body, if you practice jhanas or higher mental stages, bearing a physical human body, mentally we can live as a divine person, as a Brahman. I did, when I started learning about Buddhism, I was I understood always that the body is the, our condition, is the ego, and everything comes from the body is wrong, is is it's gonna be impermanent. Every actions we have with our body, it can, you know, our body is gonna die. Actually, it's gonna transform when we die, when our consciousness separated from the body. That's what we call the ego. Consciousness is it's gonna stay forever. It's, it's, least forever to me. It's just charged with all these knowledge and experiences. But when it enters in another body, if that body is, is, is probably the best, you know, for that consciousness, they can develop, they can they become um, a better person. But to me, I think people say, no, you can't, you can't separate body and consciousness. But you understand that you have to, like that. You see the, the body, you know, it's matter. We, we can get sick, we can make a lot of mistakes, but we can do a lot of things, but our consciousness is it, taking over the... It, it becomes intrinsic, one, with the body. But in this description you're saying that consciousness is forever, so it's permanent. Yeah. Of course. No. no. Yeah. Then you can... Actually, uh, always, always Buddhism explains that there is something which is consciousness that influences our entire life, but it is impermanent. Every moment consciousness changes. <coughs> Not only our physical body changes, even our consciousness changes. The difference between Buddhists and others, like they think that there is a permanent soul which goes from birth to birth. But it, according to Buddhist point of view, we believe a consciousness, but it is impermanent. It influences next thought, changing. And it is impermanent. The difference between Buddhists and others, we believe next birth, but we think not only even our physical form changes, but every moment while we are living, mind changes, consciousness changes. And also, the other special thing is that, very important thing in Buddhism is that, we explain the next birth, we say there is a next birth. We think now this person dies, and he will be reborn in this world, we say only in the mundane level. 
in the supramundane level for example when buddha was in the world there were some persons who asked buddha they asked sometimes that after we die we will be reborn what did buddha say buddha was silent then again they asked will not be reborn next birth they are also buddha was silent that is in supramundane level but in the ordinary level would they explain try to do good deeds hmm. try to be reborn in a blissful life would they advise but it is explained in mundane level in the ordinary level when we go to the supramundane level buddha didn't tell that there is a birth or not it is in a higher level so what chan said to her like yeah. so this is not forever it's conscious that it influences the next thought mm-hmm. accumulates energy but it is impermanent so it doesn't go on forever yes in buddha's time there was a monk whose name sati he was a sati he he taught his disciples that there is a consciousness which goes to birth to birth not only he explained but he told that buddha also explained the same thing <laughs> yeah buddha uh, buddha told a person to come to that person to buddha and buddha advised that monk that even i never told you that there is a no particular permanent thought or consciousness which goes to from moment to moment how i explain a thought or person who goes to next birth <laughs> hmm. it is in supramundane level okay now time is close okay okay thank you so much for your good attention and today we discussed aloka or wisdom wisdom is the mostly appreciated in buddhism buddha says it is as a gem panya narana ratana wisdom is the gem or diamond of a person and panya parisujyati wisdom purifies our mind and also nakti panya sama aba this is the highest bright light in the world which is wisdom but always appreciated having a wisdom and not only he acts appreciated but he pointed out the way how to achieve the wisdom and as the result of achieving wisdom we can overcome suffering for that i wish you all the best by the power of the all spiritual energies that we acquired here may our departed relatives also receive these spiritual energies and may they enhance their spiritual energy finally they also attain final bliss of liberation with that intention let's share this merit with our departed relatives reciting the gatha idam me nyati nam ho to sukita hon to nyatayo idam me nyati nam ho to sukita hon to nyatayo idam me nyati nam ho to sukita hon to nyatayo by the power of all these meritorious meritorious activities may guardian deities and angels also receive these spiritual energies may they enhance their divine energy may they keep their eye on you too with that intention let's share this merits with guardian deities and angels also with reciting the gatha akasatha cha bhumatha deva naga maidika punyantang anumoditva chirang rakkantu sasanam akasathaj bhummatha devanaga mahidika punyantang anumo 
चिरां रखं तो देशनं आकाशठा च बुम्मठा देवा नागा महिद्दिका पुण्यं तं अनुमोदित्वा चिरां रखं तो तं सदा बाय द पावर ऑफ ऑल दिस स्पिरिचुअल एनर्जीज मे यू बी वेल हैप्पी एंड पीसफुल मे नो हार्म कम टू यू मे नो प्रॉब्लम्स कम टू यू मे नो डिफिकल्टीज कम टू यू मे यू ऑल राइचस विशेस मीट इज सक्सेस फाइनली मे ऑल ऑफ अस अटेन फाइनल ब्लिस ऑफ लिबरेशन साधो साधो दुख पंथा निंदुख भय पंथा च निभया शोक पंथा निशोक ओंतो संबे पिपा निनो मे द ट्रिपल जेम ब्लेस यू